everyone. Uh, I'm going to keep this short and sweet, so bear with me. Uh, my name is Vaidehi Thete. I work at the New York Times on the machine learning and data platform team. Uh, I've been with the Times for over three years now. And today, I'm going to be talking about how we used uh, Go to augment our machine learning pipelines to elaborate how we leveraged into process communication to streamline machine learning inference using Go. I know that's quite the mouthful, but we'll explore this together. I would like to start by giving a brief background of what my team does. We productionize machine learning models built by different teams. We do so by hosting them on our platform, enabling them to deploy models to serve requests in a real-time manner in a low latency setting and a high fault tolerance. It goes without saying that our platform is a bunch of services that are built using Go. Our platform powers a bunch of cross-functional disciplines at the organizational levels. For instance, we drive engagement by deploying models that recommend users what article to read next. For registered users who are in the beginning of their journey with us, we deploy ML models that power the paywall with the goal to incentivize registered users to become subscribers. And for subscribers who wish to part with us, we also deploy machine learning models that recommend them a reduced price subscription, which incentivizes them to stay with us a little longer. Recently, we ventured into a brand new territory of targeted emails. As the name suggests, targeted emails are used to algorithmic identify a user base for a piece of content. By sending this email to a curated audience, we boost the on-site traffic to the times by driving up the engagement, by rec recommending them content tailored to their preference. How do we do it? We first set up an ML service that hosts an ML model that outputs a bunch of probabilities. Uh, for example, we output a probability uh, that a user will click on this email, and along with the probability of a user who might unsubscribe from this email, yikes. Uh, so the goal is to like, balance this probability to identify which content a user is most likely to read from a given cohort of articles. But wait a minute, does that sound vaguely familiar? Didn't I just already describe that? Don't we already do this? Turns out there is like a second part to the solution. So in order to generate over 40 million uh, user content recommendations independently, we deploy multiple replicas of our recommendation services across different servers. Uh, this way we are not like bottlenecked in terms of compute and memory resources, allowing us to uh, unlock low latency by scaling up our performance. Uh, this allows us to like keep pace with an ever-changing news cycle, uh, which helps the newsroom to send emails to the relevant cohorts quickly. And once these uh, 40 million plus uh, user content recommendations are ready, we need to like aggregate them on a single instance of an ML ranking service, where a second model can perform slicing and dicing operations to generate an audience for each of the content IDs in the poll. We call this ranking because uh, the output is ultimately curating a user base custom to all of these content IDs. The problem is, we are aiming to onboard this ranking model that is written by data scientists in Python onto a platform that is fairly mature. It's written in Go, and it supports a variety of operations across the whole life cycle of maintaining, making an inference call. More importantly, how do we do this in a way that is not too painful to integrate for both parties involved? Now, in our journey to implement the solution, we align on some guiding principles to vet and validate our options. First and foremost being separation of concerns. The data scientists do what they do best, write machine learning models in Python. Now, our goal as platform engineers is to ensure that we don't bog them with the minutiae of maintaining and deploying the infrastructure around this model. Our platform is written in Go because we optimize for concurrency, type safety, and garbage collection, all of the good features that Go offers us right out of the box. Our second guiding principle was ensuring fast reads of this data stream while still maintaining integrity of the data upon which the ranking operations are to be performed. Last but not least, we want the system to be resilient in the face of failures. We want the ranking model to be stateless, so it should just immediately start ranking whenever we get the whole data set to it as fast as possible. And this is where we come in. Keeping these three tenets in mind, we stumble onto the programming paradigm of inter-process communication via shared memory. But what is shared memory? So it is the process by which two pro separate processes on the same machine communicate with each other by writing the data onto the same address space, which is loaded onto RAM for faster access. 
And how does this work? So let's say we have like two processes, process X and process Y, they have the same address space. If process X adds a new data to this memory, it is also accessible by process Y, allowing it to use the data in a way it sees fit. So let's take a look at how we use Go to set up these shared memory regions. Uh, when we looked into Go to uh, set up these functionalities, we were very surprised and also very relieved to learn how straightforward it was. Uh, creating a shared memory region simply involved initializing the file object, setting the file size, and map the object in the memory region for access with relevant permissions. And we were able to achieve this with writing a function with simply three lines of code and with some error handling thrown in. So yeah, first step done. Now with the thing shim being analyzed, uh, initialized, sorry, we then wrote the functionality to write the data to the shared memory using the native Go methods of copying the data to the shim while keeping track of the address space size so that we don't encounter any storage issues. Cleanup is equally simple. We just unmount the shim from the address space, close the file, and clean up the object from the system. Now, this is a read operation which demonstrates how if you have a shim which contains a list of in64 numbers, we just iterate through that byte stream in chunks of eight bytes, store the concomitant integer representation in the results lies, and voila. We now can also read from the shims. So uh, the key takeaway is we were able to leverage Go to interact with the shims, which ultimately allowed us to leverage the inter-process communication paradigm to send the data over to a different process, which was a huge win in like reducing the problem space for us. Now let's how, look at uh, how we set up the system. We park our ranking model behind our inference service Trident, which is NVIDIA's open source inference serving software. And we use the Go application to spin up our ranking service. And they communicate via shared memory. No surprises here. Uh, this allows us to neatly honor our first goal, which is separation of concerns, inference, and operationalization. Now with the medium being identified, let's take a look at the data contract. In the machine learning world, there is a concept known as tensors. Uh, they are essentially data structures that are a uh, multidimensional array of numerical values. So we are using Go to pack the tensors onto the shim, which is eventually then picked up by the ML model written in Python to perform its own set of operations. So currently, the output of the recommendation system model uh, comprises of four distinct tensors. As you can see, they are pretty versatile in terms of the dimensions and their types. We have some int64s, we have some multidimensional float32s, and int8s. So it's pretty flexible that way. And each record per user occupies about like 57 bytes. Now bear in mind, we need to write 40 million such records, each occupying about 57 bytes, to the shims as fast and as safe as possi uh, possible, because this is a real-time stream of recommendations. How do we go about achieving this? We achieve this by batching up the tensors that allow us to capitalize on the high throughput we get. And we just don't batch the records together end to end. Instead, we transform these records by batching like tensors together. So for 500 records, tensor one will have 500 entities. Tensor two will have 5,000. Tensor three will have 2,500. And tensor four will have 500 records, which lends like an element of predictability to what uh, we are trying to like achieve here. Uh, I would also like to highlight here that the color schema matches the, uh, in the grid, matches the tensor type in the score struct here to drive home the point of like packing the similar tensors together. And we now use this transform data structure to write the tensor data to the shims. And we validate this by comparing the checksum of the batch before it's passed over to the shim, which allow us to, allows us to like validate the integrity of this data that is being written to the shims at scale. With the tenses being grouped to their respective types, we can now easily use the methods we had initially written to manipulate the shims and like populate them accordingly. With the communication patterns and the data contract being identified, we ultimately reduce the problem space to an operationalization problem for regular Go service that reads from a data stream using worker pools and channels to distribute tasks across multiple Go routines and populate the relevant shim region. Let's zoom in a little here. Well, once again, like our originally defined functions, which were like fairly simple and straightforward, have come in really clutch to write the tensors to the correct shim via just the copy operation to individual tensor shims. 
And upon like benchmarking this in production, we found that the operation to write over like 40 million records or like four gigabytes, it takes about like 50 seconds to populate. So even if we encounter failures in production, uh, a restart would fairly still be fairly fast because we can uh, we we take at most like a minute or two to like populate all of these values all over again, giving us like a fighting ch chance to uh, speed up the things. Now let's take a step-by-step -step look at how the system works. So we deploy these two processes as two containers inside a Kubernetes pod and have a memory volume mount shared between them. We use a Go app to initialize the shims by tensor. And upon receiving the signal that the stream is ready for consumption, we populate the shim for each of the input tensors. Now let's zoom in once again to ID, uh, identify what exactly is happening under the hood. The key takeaway that I want you to take away from this talk is that once the ingresses and egresses were identified, it became pretty boring, predictable, uh, and almost I was like looking forward to like optimizing this because now I knew that I was I would definitely be able to leverage the Go native data structures and paradigms to like operationalize and scale the system in a predictable way. So this was uh, definitely a huge uh, a winning point for Go to like continue to like continue using this in our platform. So with the tensors now being mounted onto the shims, uh, we now create an output tensor, the output tensor shims and hand it off to the ranking model that is hosted behind the Python service. Now we are in Python territory here where the ranking model can access the input tensors for, for, tensors for the shims and the Trident inference server already has the functionality to read in data from the shims and also like write to it, which means that there is no code additions needed from both the data scientists and for us as platform engineers, which is also a huge win-win for both teams. Pop quiz, what is ranking? Um, don't worry, I've got you here. Uh, so like to recap, ranking is once again the process of slicing and dicing the tensors that captures the outputs of all these recommendation models uh, to ultimately uh, give us a result which is a curated uh, user base which is custom for all of these content IDs. So now the inference server populates the output of the ranking model to the output chains. And here on, the Go service once again takes over to read in the output, add some business logic metadata to results, and send the output file to the downstream team, which parses the files and sends the, all the emails. So in conclusion, we were able to expand our machine learning platform to support additional machine learning use cases, which leverage Go to optim operationalize pretty much everything that was not a machine learning model, but help productionize use case that is powered by one. Um, something that really helped us in our journey was using Go's interfaces, where we were able to rapidly prototype the setup with in-memory implementations of our supporting services, which allowed us to focus on the core functionality that we wanted to test and develop. And once we were able to iron out the flow, we were able to add in the relevant methods for our production services that we communicate with during our day-to-day -day business operations. Uh, and this pipeline was like very successful in launching the targeted email programs at scale. We were able to like migrate from a process that historically took hours to generate these cohorts to minutes in this new setting. And in doing so, we were able to achieve statistical, statistically significant results, uh, leading to an increase in more active users, more clicks, and also user, uh, reduce the probability of a user subscribing from these emails. Uh, moving forward, uh, we are currently in the process of using this whole flow to launch a multivariant version of the service where we concurrently perform all of these uh, operations across multiple ranking models, uh, which uh, helps the data science teams to experiment with different models and eventually roll out the best models to all of these users. Uh, that brings me to the end of the talk. Uh, I am happy to take questions async, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you.